Hi. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, we're going to talk a bit uh, about the stuff we do in a project called JATEN. Um, so my name is Paweł Bawlinski. I work for the uh, Polish national uh, CERT, uh, CERT PL. And Alex from CERT yeah, I think some people know my co-speaker. Um, and so this talk is TLP uh, clear, so photos are allowed if you want, but I can also share the slides. It's simpler. Um, Without maybe providing too much background on the like uh, the the, the uh, administrative part of the project, but I just wanted to not mention that we got some uh, par part of our funding is uh, from the European Union. So thank you, uh, you, uh, and we have a pretty um, uh, nice consortium uh, made almost exclusively from national C certs uh, in the in Europe. Uh, including Luxembourg, of course. Um, and uh, what well, the project is, uh, uh, I think the ambition is way bigger than the budget, uh, but the uh, ambition is to uh, improve uh, how the uh, information sharing happens uh, among European CSERTs, but not only CSERTs, uh, I think all, uh, all organizations that um, participate in, in cyber defense uh, and uh, to do this kind of in a more proactive way, in a more earlier to share to share data as early as possible and in a as useful way as possible. Um, so to be a bit more specific, uh, we are contributing to uh, multiple open source tools and also working on data sources as a part of this project. So uh, we try to. Um, improve uh, the, the data coverage that they, the, is accessible to, to teams like, like ours. Uh, so if you think of various uh, threat intelligence sources, uh, but also like more raw data sources, for example, passive DNS, um, that's, that's the kind of things we, we try to uh, work on and, and make sure that this data is available. To more broadly, um, we also contribute to some of the tools that help with uh, anal uh, analysis of the data, especially working with uh, perhaps like a larger amount of data or uh, or, or multiple data sets. And uh, finally, uh, an important part is to uh, improve the situation with the, how the information is shared, because uh, especially when we are talking about um, automated uh, exchange of information, uh, there is still a lot of a lot of work to do, and um, uh, that the, let's say that there are still many barriers. So the actually useful information is shared, and we want to uh, add a bit of contribute a bit to, to, to lower this barrier and to, to decrease the cost of, of sharing uh, valuable information. Um, okay, so uh, we'll do a very quick overview of some of the open source tools we are supporting as a part of this project. Um, and starting with something that maybe is known in this room, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I won't do an introduction, a complete introduction of MISP, but the thing in the JETAN project, a lot of the members were already using MISP in the CSIRT network and in different network of CSIRT. Uh, they are actually, uh, actually using MISP for doing uh, information sharing. The thing that is quite important to, to understand with MISP is, is actually a platform that you can use to share a lot of custom intelligence. Um, so it's not related only to IOCs, but you can really use it to customize it to share additional information that you are, I would say, new to share with. So that means, for example, new data format, new data structures. Um, and obviously, the idea behind is to collaborate. Um, and within the JITAN project for MISP is important for us because it's new use case and we extend it. Um, Andras presented Cerebrate, which is one of the companions to MISP um, for the sharing groups and so on, which is basically an extension for JET and uh, networks too, where we have community of people that are actually sharing information and uh, extending those tools to support that is important. So MISP is basically one of the core elements of the, of, of the uh, JET and networks um, and especially that afterwards feeds are consumed and so on and uh, you can uh, basically use it to uh, to do analysis detections or uh, 
uh, inject into protective device. Um, another tool, and I think this one is, is I think, a, a bigger part of the digital networks, and especially the contribution that we got from the European Union on that. Um, it's a kind of extension that we do with AIL. Um, uh, Xavier mentioned it uh, in this uh, lightning talks about um, this tool. So it's a tool that we developed for some years now. It's actually a tool for analyzing unstructured information. So think about pasties, things about um, web pages, forums, dumps, um, raw text, and so on. It's really a tool for detecting on that that kind of, of information. Information leaks, general intelligence, insight, uh, and any other thing that you can uh, you can basically um, create under the Yara rules and so on. So all the framework, again, like me, is open source. And you have additional services on top for doing automatic crawling, um, such as store and so on. And we'll see that later on in the JTAN project, we basically want to share that kind of raw information. So like that, you don't need to uh, to crawl like in five different countries the exactly same content. You just share it, and then others can benefit from it and, and use and use this information. So it's really a nice source for JTAN and to provide additional information for others. Um, we have specific feeders for for telegrams and so on. We'll talk a bit later about the futures, but for example, we uh, we have new extension in AL to have improvement for uh, conversation and so on, and you can even track down the past conversations, finding out um, information that has been leaked and so on. So that's one of the tools uh, that part of the of the JTAN project. All right, but there is also some uh, things that are not made in Luxembourg. Uh, so <laughs> one is uh, MWDB, uh, that that one made in Poland uh, mostly. Uh, so this this is the uh, uh, repository for malware samples, mal malware configurations. Um, uh, we also provide uh, like the open instance uh, for the community. Um, so that's the kind of uh, uh, part of the let's say more more specialized because it's specifically built for. Uh, Collecting, sharing uh, malware intelligence, so not not a generic tool like uh, like MISP. Uh, but yeah, if you would like to learn more about this one, we are actually doing a training tomorrow uh, at nine. So uh, uh, you are very much uh, uh, invited to to join. It will be a deep dive, uh, three hours. So. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and I can say this tool is really incredible for the SIR teams because I don't know how many of you did already reversing on uh, malware and so on. Like the the task of extracting configuration is super super painful. Use uh, those tools because those tools is really saving a lot of time for you. All right, so some more things. Uh, we are going in the like the less known uh, direction, I think. Uh, so, Graphoscope is uh, prepared. What well, was developed by yet another uh, CSERT in Europe, so the Latvian uh, National CSERT, um, and it's uh, like uh, a tool to support analysts in querying multiple uh, data sets. Uh, so, that's uh, I think some similarities to Multigo are kind of uh, in, maybe war warranted, although the, the, the main developer like always says it's not a good comparison. I don't know why, but I think the general idea is uh, that, that uh, it allows you to query multiple uh, databases uh, what, in, in multiple, uh, using multiple APIs uh, in, from a single graphical interface and also an API. Um, and uh, another project that we have uh, in in this in this collection is uh, Tranis NG. So this one is uh, also like geared towards uh, analysts, but uh, uh, specifically for uh, creation of uh, uh, reports, especially open uh, uh, open source uh, intelligence analysis, where you have the, the, so these tools helps with. Uh, if, if you're creating like weekly reports, for example, where you co collect uh, news, uh, vulnerability reports, uh, whatever, uh, from from very many open source uh, sources, uh, Taranis can help you uh, manage that kind of uh, like multiple feeds of that kind of information and prepare uh, reports based on that. So like a Pretty typical thing many of us, many of our teams uh, uh, do, and that's uh, yeah, that's a 
cattle uh, coming mostly from from the Slovak uh, uh, national uh, sea surge. <laughs> the thing that is interesting with this tool is um, this tool has been originally developed the first version by the uh, um, Dutch uh, National CSIRT and this tool evolved over time so you see that a lot of set of the tool that we have in the JETAN project are basically originating from um, different uh, CSIRT and it's actually a kind of I don't like the term but kind of ecosystem of different tools and the JETAN project really emphasizes the fact that we interconnect those tools um, and that's That's really what we want we to do, uh, and we'll uh, show a bit later on that topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, let's move to the, informa the information exchange. Uh, for, for the tools, uh, I think each, each of the tools could have a separate presentation on its own. Uh, so I think that uh, we just don't have time here in this, in this talk. Uh, if you are interested, just uh, we'll be happy to talk about it. Uh, but I think the easiest way is just to check their uh, GitHub Uh, project pages uh, to, to, to get more information. Uh, so we, what we want to focus on is uh, the information exchange aspect of, of our project. Um, and uh, uh, for, for our teams, uh, I think it, it's not very unique. Uh, we need uh, a lot of good information, good information of good quality to do uh, threat hunting. Uh, it's also, uh, victim notification is a very important part of uh, our job, uh, especially on the national level, where, where we uh, want to identify as quickly as possible uh, victims of, of any, any incidents uh, and uh, yeah, reach out to them in, a, in an effective way. Um, and so obviously, general situational awareness however you understand it but yeah, knowing what's what's happening in in your constituency um, and uh, over the years that there was a lot of work done on uh, information exchange and so we have now tools like like MISP for example and many others that help this but uh, I don't think it will be ever a solved problem there there is always uh, there'll be always room to improve Um, and from um, our perspective, there is, uh, if we look at what the situation today, there is a lot of uh, val potentially valuable data that can be used for, for, for our analysis uh, in the silos, so which is uh, where, where we don't have access to it for, for many reasons. It can be, uh, we are just not aware that That, that there is some interesting data somewhere or uh, there are some uh, formal issues, uh, uh, formal barriers to getting access to this, uh, technical uh, issues, getting access to, access to it, or we just don't have time to, um, to ingest it, for example. Um, another uh, problem that we see pretty often uh, is that uh, Some organizations, and that in includes uh, my team, for example, we are uh, reluctant to share uh, information that we know is not of the high quality. Uh, so kind of noisy data, data that contains false positives. Uh, and uh, uh, we, when, when we are certain about something and we, it, and we can share it, we will share it. Uh, but when we know that uh, it is some kind of, especially we've auto collected from automated systems, it is not vetted, it contains uh, mistakes, it contains false positives, uh, we will uh, often uh, not share it with peers for, for the reason not to kind of overwhelm them with, uh, with, with noise, so to speak. Um, And that's also uh, the, the, the area that we feel that can be can be improved, and we try to do something in this regard. Uh, so, just a disclaimer: uh, with this with this project and and this talk, we will focus on machine to machine uh, information exchange. Uh, so, not really like this person to person, where you can have uh, that often happens in a, like a trust groups and the like. Uh, which is which has a bit different dynamics, different tooling. Um, so, also a very interesting topic, but not uh, the topic that we're going to talk about today. Um, so, we, when we were speaking about like this uh, data exchange, especially machine to machine, uh, there are a couple of 
things we need to solve to to achieve uh, like meaningful meaningful uh, information sharing. Um, so first, uh, we start with discovery. So just knowing what what to get. So for example, uh, thanks to events like this, we can get to know that there is some good uh, friend, int friend intelligence source. Uh, for example, Circle is developing something, uh, some new uh, crawler or some new monitoring that can be useful for us. Uh, so discovery is pretty crucial uh, to know what's uh, available out there. Uh, and then on a purely technical uh, level, if we have some transport, it can be I don't know, taxi, it can be uh, raw TCP socket, whatever. Uh, some serialization format, thankfully now we use JSON, so it's pretty usually pretty simple. Uh, then we have some kind of schema, hopefully, uh, for and uh, semantics, so we know kind of what the other side of the conversation is talking about. Uh, what is often, uh, what goes like beyond like purely technical, something that can be solved by, by tools, uh, is understanding of the data. Um, and, uh, I think that's, that's, that's most difficult to solve because we can get, uh, uh, a lot of information, but we still need to put some effort into, uh, understanding the, the source of information, the quality of the information. And, uh, it is very much, uh, difficult to, to do in a, in a fully some automated part. Um, so we'll have uh, we'll show you one of one example where uh, how how what we what we did in in uh, in our project to help a bit with with uh, like disseminating the information that we have, but we are also aware that it's not like available to uh, a wide enough audience. So we have a situation where we are sitting on some data. Uh, we, we are sharing that with some community of users. In this particular case, it is MWDB. So there is, uh, I think, like over, over a thousand users on our, like, main instance. Uh, so we know that these users have access to our data, but we also know that there are, like, thousands of other analysts that could potentially benefit from this data, but just they don't have account on, on, on our uh, MWDB TB instance. Um, so, um, and the data I'm, I'm talking about, uh, is, uh, in particular kind of, uh, what you can use for, uh, indicators of compromise. Uh, so, uh, on this screenshot, you have a screenshot of a malware config. So there is some, uh, uh, C2, uh, C2 addresses that can be used for detection. Uh, also for, also we have, uh, cryptographic material if you want to do like more, uh, more, uh, in-depth investigation of a particular, uh, botnet and the like. So for some people, this information is useful. And what we want to do is to, uh, kind of increase our reach. Yeah. So to, to have this data available more, more widely. Um, so what we do, uh, we turn, uh, to, to MISP. And uh, MISP can help with uh, quite a few things. Uh, so first of all, it can help with discovery. Um, so if we put this data into MISP, it can just appear on someone, someone else's instance and they don't need to kind of actively look for it, which is already like simplifies this uh, to, to some degree. Um, that the, the way the MISP synchronization protocol works uh, already kind of solves the, the transport issue. Uh, so you don't need to develop uh, custom connector uh, to, to our system. Um, the format and the schema are defined in the in the MISP uh, RFC. Um, and the semantics are also kind of defined in RFC and in the like the all the taxonomies, galaxies and, and object schemas that MISP uh, has. Um, understanding is still not solved, but as I mentioned that tooling will not really solve understanding of, of the of the data. Uh, of course, there are some caveats. There are some, uh, things that, that maybe that the picture is not so simple. Um, so of course we, here we assume that, the, that people that we want to kind of reach are MISP users, uh, for discovery. That means that they would need to be connected to some MISP communi community, uh, so we can, so the data will reach them eventually. Um, and, 
especially on the semantics part, the, the, the taxonomies and galaxies and objects are really not so trivial to 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 use properly. And uh, for us, for example, it was not obvious which taxonomies to use to be kind of most. Uh, uh, universal to be gen to have like a generic information that is not specific not, not not to be very kind of specific to to our use case, but still it helps. And uh, so we have uh, uh, right now we have this integration working where uh, the configure so configurations from MWDB uh, go into uh, MISP. Uh, the, this this integration is open source as actually everything that we are talking about is is open source, including that. Uh, that connector between MWDB and MISP, and the result is uh, already uh, data flowing into MISP. But but when you have automated even <laughs> problem starts, um, so there's something to, to consider, and that's I think kind of a success of MISP. But at the same time, it's kind of a drawback. Uh, at the beginning, a lot of organizations are installing a MISP instance and they use it for everything. So for human consumable information, for machine to machine configurations and so on. So you might have, for example, on, on significant large MISP instance, a lot of unrelated correlations, many potential false positive. I just took some example of, of today. This one is coming from our automatic tech door notification that we use at the third. And we basically have a lot of information that are correlating and so on is not the most interesting, I would say, information for an analyst. Um, so sometimes it can confuse analysts and so on. Um, and you see that you might have a lot of false positive as information. That was, uh, was possible when mentioning before. Some information that we share might have a high level of false positive and so on. Even in this case, this information is interesting, even if it's noisy and so on. So we decided to move on and, and find a solution for that. So, um, and that's maybe something that you can take out of this project if you, you plan to install MISP instances and so on. Um, in the GTAN sharing network, we have dedicated MISP instances that are only used for automated events and feed sharing. So that means it's only the automation. So Pavel mentioned the uh, malware database where um, they extract automatically configuration and so on. Those one is very valuable information because it's a very interesting information, but you don't want to basically be overwhelmed by such kind of information. So uh, in MISP, you have a, a functionality that is called the caching features, which is uh, a nice one, and not everyone is aware of that one. Um, so you can, for example, synchronize MISP instances only on the values themselves and build a cache. And this cache allows you to um, uh, basically find out correlations without the, having the amount of data within your MISP instance. Um, so we decided to do in that approach on the JTAN network so that we'll, we will benefit from this kind of siloed information that you basically don't share usually, that we force, or at least we say that we promote the sharing on that kind of information into the JTAN networks, and to reduce the analyst confusions on uh, uh, MISP instances and so on, they have, we have dedicated MISP instances for the automation aspect. Uh, but is not blocking the analyst afterwards when say something popping up, for example, uh, I don't know how many configuration you do per day, but I think it's, it's dozens. Dozens. So you might have dozens of malware configurations, but you might be very interested by one specific case, which is related to APT29, for example. In this case, you might find one configuration in that lot of information from the MISP GTAN from machine to machine, and you can just export the insight into another MISP instance and continue your investigation. So you still benefit from what the uh, police short is doing as the information. And you don't need to dig into all the information. You just see the correlation that is really interesting for you. You extract the information and you basically do a complementary analysis. So that's the model that we have in JTAN and we try to do that to benefit from both sides, machine to machines and human to machines or human to human. So another thing that is interesting too, um, so in JTAN, when we say sharing, there's multiple way of sharing. Um, MISP is basically a kind of async model, so you basically pull push information, you synchronize and so on. But a lot of data are, are raw data. You mentioned the raw data that we, we have at, at JTAN. And this raw data is valuable for some organizations and valuable for some users. And what we, um, we have at, uh, at Circle, for example, we provide some data services to partners. Uh, so we have a real-time passive DNS data stream, which is counting uh, hundreds of, of events per, uh, per minute. Uh, which is basically passive DNS resolutions. Um, you have, we, for example, have a, a list of the newly seen IPv6 addresses. So if you want to scan for IPv6 networks, you can basically use that feed. 
Um, we have specific uh, certificate transparency stream. Um, we have uh, services for scanning SSH services where we collect public keys. It's quite useful for threat intelligence. And I was mentioning Hale previously. We were scrapping a lot of, or we are still scrapping a lot of information from Tor. But sometimes we want to share and distribute that to different partners. So the streaming use case, MISP is obviously not designed for streaming. So we don't, don't want to run that directions. Um, so we wanted to basically have a solution that is supporting that. So for us, the thing with the streams, we had some already existing stream at Circle, but it's basically ad hoc basis with manual configuration and so on. And what we decided to do is to, to basically create a software that is supporting the, the creation of users to obviously normalize the streaming of format and how you acquire those stream of data. And especially not only to provide streams, but to be able to get stream back from other partners. A CSIRT might have a passive DNS stream from one country, another one can get from another country, and you want to mix and merge, for example, those kind of streams because they are interesting for both, uh, both use cases. So what we um, uh, develop, so one of my colleagues, uh, uh, Jean-Louis, developed a tool called Cocktail Party. Uh, it's part of a new set of tools that we do at Circle called Flow Intel, which is a different block that you can reuse for doing your uh, intelligence pipeline. Um, and what we wanted to do is to, to basically have a real software where people can actually share information. So what we decided to do for framework, uh, so maybe some of you are using Calidoc uh, Certificate uh, Transparency Server, which is well known. This one came from a Python implementation to an Elixir one, and the software stack is very stable. Um, we, we have using it for years now. It's is, is never uh, never crashing, is running like uh, perfectly, uh, and so on. So we decided to go in that direction for the software. So the software that we design is called Cocktail Party, um, and it's basically running with the Phoenix uh, framework. Um, the nice thing with that, this framework is already supporting WebSocket automatically, uh, the kind of client stream, client connections, subscriptions, and so on, management uh, directly in the tools, and there's uh, an authorization uh, system that is quite robust. Um, and the tool is open source, so we officially kind of open source it today, um, where this uh, software can provide real-time data stream to end users. Uh, and another thing that is interesting, and that's the thing that we wanted to do, is to simplify the stream management. Um, I mean, opening firewalls, uh, creating scripts, modifying configuration, and so on, it's painful. Uh, if you have, like, I don't know, 10 tickets a day to manage streams, and you do that in, in, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes, it's close to two hours a day, so it's, like, not very efficient. Um, and we wanted to have something that end users can just say, okay, I want this stream, this stream, and this stream, and I get a web socket back with all the data, and you can, uh, right. So, cocktail parties in uh, active development, there will be much more release in the next uh, next months, uh, but it's a key element to to have, I would say, in complement to MISP for uh, exchanging stream uh, of data uh, into that. So I invite you, if you are interested, to stream uh, information to, to share that. So what's next? Um, so the JTAN project has plenty of activities. We did a uh, specific, for example, session about passive DNS and so on. Um, now we will do a hackathon um, that will be in the 14th of December in Luxembourg, in our offices, so it will be a physical hackathon. You are more than uh, welcome to join if you are interested in that topic. Uh, so the event is really accessible to everyone and really to work on usually interoperability problems, uh, exchange of information, uh, and so on. Um, then you have additional things like uh, exporting sandbox reports from different CSS automatically. Um, I mean, a lot of CSS are already doing sandbox analysis of malware, uh, suspicious software, and so on. But they don't actually share the result. Uh, so it's again very noisy, but it's still very interesting to correlations and so on. So that's one of the uh, projects on the next month. For Cocktail Party, uh, stable release is foreseen very soon. And as Pavel mentioned, with all the different tools, they are all under active development. So uh, we are actively working on it. And so if you have any idea and so on, don't hesitate to open GitHub issues and, and contribute back. Yeah, so... Uh just to show maybe the final slide. Uh, I'm not sure if I have, if I have quite some, okay. So we don't have time for questions, but, uh, here are the links to the projects, uh, and the, the open source projects that we mentioned at the beginning. And yeah, we will be here. So just come by and we'll be happy to talk about it. Thank you. Thank you very much.